behind me you see the predecessor for the modern cruise missile. This was called the aerial torpedo or more colloquially the Kettering bug, named for its inventor Charles Kettering. And this was an idea that had originated with the Navy, at least in the United States, where you could have a remote controlled or a self-controlled unpiloted guided bomb um, based, based on kind of a very simple airplane platform. Um, the Army borrowed this idea from the Navy in late 1917, and that project was given to the, what's, what became known as the Engineering Division at McCook Field here in Dayton, Ohio, and that's the predecessor for the current Air Force Research Laboratory and for the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center. Um, Charles Kettering took this idea and, with, based on the principles of utter simplicity and um, inexpense, um, he incorporated some very basic technologies to get this automatic uh, self-guided uh, bomb put together. Uh, the most important of which was the control system. And this used a gyroscope, which if you want to think about, about that as like a bicycle tire that rotates. When it's not moving, the bike falls over. When it is moving, the bike goes in a straight line. Well, gyroscope works the same way in here. It wants to stay in a straight line so that if the airplane that's not being piloted by anyone, uh, when it's up in the air, if it starts to turn, this gyroscope operates a very simple pneumatic control system to straighten it out. You can see on the, the wing strut, there's a very small propeller that controlled the distance. They would set it and actually they borrowed a little counter from national cash register, cash registers, um, that when that propeller spun so many times, you knew it had gone the distance you wanted. Like it might be several thousand revolutions for say 10 miles, but once that, uh, spun the counter enough that would cut off the fuel to the engine, uh, the engine would stop and this thing would fall on the target. So very basic um, in principle, but it turned out that the operation was a lot harder than they thought. Control systems weren't quite there yet. So this technology was developed but not used during World War I and developed at a lower rate after the war. But uh, we really kind of switched the idea of using remote controlled um, unmanned aircraft uh, in that time. And then this technology was later on improved during World War II, but really uh, came to fruition in the, uh, in the Cold War uh, for cruise missiles like we uh, still see uh, in the Air Force and uh, Navy uh, inventories today.